Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. My name is Lance White, and I am your host. Tonight's guest is Jay Widener. Jay is an author, filmmaker, and hermetic scholar. He is the producer of the documentary film 2012, The Odyssey, and its forthcoming sequel, Time Wave 2013. He is co-author of The Mysteries of the Great Cross of Hende, Alchemy in the End of Time, and A Monument to the End of Time, and a contributing writer for the book The Mystery of 2012. Jay was featured on the History Channel's documentary The Lost Book of Nostradamus, He's been on numerous uh, talk shows. You probably heard him before, if you're lucky. And we could spend another hour on his many accomplishments, but let's get to the original now to hear him speak for himself. Hi, Jay. How are you? I'm really good. How are you? <laughs> good. Uh, by the way, happy birthday. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, how did you know it was my birthday on that? I was just listening to an interview, and uh, somewhere it was... You know, it was in the ether <laughs> that April 25th is your birthday. And it certainly is. So, uh, Jay, you, I've been listening to the really fantastic interviews that you've done, and the work that you're doing is, is right on the cutting edge of cosmic events. It seems that the most important approaching moment uh, for all of us is December 21st, 2012, and that all events... Uh, uh, whether they're esoteric or ancient, are, are really tied into this date. Uh, does that sound, make sense? Uh, it makes complete sense, uh, probably not to your listening audience yet, but if they bear with us, they will see that, um, in a sense, someone a long time ago uh, decided to leave markers and evidence all over the planet, usually in stone, but in various other methods also, which say that there is an enormous event coming, and we are in the middle of this event right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, this event is a turning over of the earth, to quote the, the Caro people of Peru. Uh, it is the end of the calendar, according to the Mayans. It's mm -hmm. the end of the Iron Age, according to the alchemists and the Great Cross of Hende. And it's the rebuilding of Shambhala, according to the Tibetans, and mm -hmm. it's the recreation of the temple at, of Jerusalem, according to the Freemasons. Mm -hmm. So everyone has their own take <laughs> and, and on it, but they're all... Speaking of the same thing, even though I firmly believe that most of these groups don't even know why they're remembering this. Mm. Interesting. Um, this uh, goes back into uh, biblical times as well, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Um, you've, done, you, you've done so much research on alchemy, and I'm, I've been particularly fascinated with uh, the idea of transformation of you know the coarser into the finer and um there's uh, a substance that is said to create inner illumination and it's spoken of in some of the uh, old biblical texts uh could you talk a little bit about that that's the divine substance that uh, transforms the inside well i mean the, it, it, in the uh you know it's called mana in in, in the hebrew texts and uh, people uh, people have different different names for it uh, across the world. Uh, it is essentially a cosmic uh, ether that permeates the universe, that actually informs and creates all of life and consciousness, and uh, it uh, can't be measured. It'd be like trying to. Uh, measure water with a machine that was made out of water. Mm -hmm. it, it can't. It can't be measured. So we, our scientists say it doesn't exist. Mm. But well, not all our scientists. The scientists they teach us about. Um, there's a, a large group of scientists that know what I'm saying, but mm. they're working on secret projects and creating weapons and UFOs and things that that are using this other physics that um, 
is uh, transformative and that is transdimensional or hyperdimensional. And this can be used, according to the ancient traditions, this substance can be concentrated and then used by human beings, especially human beings, to uh, uh, increase the length of your life, to increase the amount of knowledge that you can uh, have inside your head at one time, uh, to possibly even traveling across the universe without ever leaving your bedroom. So this is all part of... Uh, a ancient tradition that has been forgotten but is now coming back here at the end of this age and the beginning of the next age and in four years four and a half years we're all going to almost be ho-hum about this incredible information and those of us who are elderly or older like me will remember back when no one knew about it and laugh and chuckle and uh, think that the whole thing is really quite amusing. Oh, uh, let's hope so. <laughs> yeah, or we're dead. <laughs> well, yes, and then we might be seeing from another perspective or another dimension. Yeah, so that could happen, and we are on the verge of a possible extinction event, which is also something that should give everyone pause or concern. And uh, we have to kind of make sure that that doesn't happen. H.G. Wells says that history is a race between education and disaster, <laughs> and we're right at the finish line. So, Yes. Uh, speaking of being at the finish line, um, we're in 2008 right now, and according to the Mayan calendar, that is, uh, we're in the fifth night. In fact, we're just headed towards the midpoint of the fifth night, aren't we? Yes, we are, and we're... Um, I was in Peru last summer shooting our newest film, Time Wave 2013, mm -hmm. with the shamans of the Caro, and they told me that 2008 was going to be the year when uh, the future would become obvious. And... Uh, uh, dang, it, it isn't coming true. And uh, so um, it, it, in the, in the um, Lost Book of Nostradamus special that I, I did with the History Channel, mm -hmm. um, you know, they kind of asked me what to expect over the next few years according to these prophecies. I said famines and, you know, high spiking of oil prices and, and uh, lots of uh, problems. And I didn't really want to scare anyone, but they did ask me, and they actually put it on national television. Mm. And lo and be, and, and I was criticized quite heavily, frankly, for saying those things. Yeah. But here we are, lo, you know, lo and behold, uh, seven months later, and food prices have gone up almost 25%. Gas prices almost a dollar a gallon more than they were when I said it. Yeah. And um, all of the repercussions from this are about to be felt among the body politic and the people of this country and this world really, really soon. Before yes. the end of 2008, we're going to feel the impact, a severe impact of what is going to be the most dramatic change of the last 6,000 years. Mm. And, you know, I'm not one to spread fear because I don't really... I think it's not the right thing to do, and I'm not trying to spread fear, but I am trying to tell people that they have to take care of themselves. And it would behoove everyone listening to possibly think about, you know, learning how to grow your own food and uh, learning how to heat your place in a way that doesn't require electricity mm -hmm. and to prepare for these things, not because it's terrible, but because, in fact, the world that's coming is going to be a better world, it's just the transition period that's going to be a bit rough. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's my concern, is getting through the transition period and getting out the other side so that we can live in a world of infinite possibilities, which is the world that's coming at mm -hmm. us like gangbusters. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm essentially a very optimistic person, but in the short run, I really believe it's going to be calamitous because of several reasons. You know, some have to do with the fact that our politicians are not exactly doing a very good job. And the other one 
is that we have become spiritually bereft. Mm -hmm. We don't understand who we really are. Mm -hmm. And until that moment comes, then we're going to be in a very bad place. So it's mm -hmm. time for us to, you know, the secret of the secret. You know, the secret is that you can create your future if you really concentrate and believe and pray and do all those things. Well, the secret of the secret is how do we create a collective future that's good for everyone? And that is the answer to which we are all beginning to face and to which we must begin to imagine and reimagine what future it is we want because it's time to create the secret on a collective level, and mm -hmm. I think that's exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and <clears throat> as you uh, pretty much pointed out, I don't think we've even seen the uh, tip of the iceberg in terms of the uh, the uh, the loan business going awry. No, you know, uh, we're, we're in very, very, very serious trouble, and and, and in fact, it's it's a perfect storm. And it, it's, it's almost like you couldn't have made it any worse in some ways. Yeah. We have no manufacturing base. We're losing our agricultural base. Yep. We're, our, 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 our energy uh, supplies are dwindling. We're using valuable land to grow fuel, yeah. which is just completely silly. Yeah. And, um, it, it, and so it's almost as if every underpinning of this age is collapsing. The entire infrastructure of this entire age of 6,000, over 6,000 years of history is collapsing right in front of our eyes. And um, it, it, it is, it's so unbelievable that no one can even say it on national television mm -hmm. or in the media. They can't even move their lips to actually say what they see is happening, mm. and so it's fallen on the shoulders of people like me who don't really have any to lose to tell our friends and our family and the people who care about what is about to happen. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the mystics see um, things. The mystics are like shamans. They live out on the edge of reality, and they see what's happening first because they're at the boundary level. Mm. And... And so if you quit and you don't listen to your mystics, then you fall into real trouble. And I think that we had better start listening to the people who live out on the outer edges of this reality because they see the storm coming and they're trying to warn you to batten down the hatches. Mm -hmm. And they're not doing it to scare you. They're doing it because they like you. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> this is the thing that you know that baffles me is the reaction of some people who say that this is a negative thing. I don't think negative thing at all. I think it's actually a wonderful thing. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. you know, yeah, I know it's going to be hard and it's going to be rough. But at the same time, we can't go on with what we're doing here in this world. We yeah. Just, we can't. No, and, it, uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's literally impossible. It is. It's literally impossible. It's a world of boundaries, of finite boundaries, and we have hit the end. And there's no way we've actually used up the future. Oh, yeah, uh, way into the future. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, there's a planetary credit card. We're deep in debt, as Alberto Viola likes to say. And that's exactly what it is. And so this is it. This is the critical period. And, yeah. um, you know, people in my community um, are getting together and we're having meetings and we're we're learning how to do things in, in, by hand. Huh. Um, we're learning how to, we're, we're teaching ourselves how to do it now with because we know that it's coming. And no, it's not going to be next year. And it's not going to be in two years. But it's going to be here in five years. Yeah. And, you know, the Wall Street Journal on November 19th of 2007, front page article, announced that um, there were essentially going to be on the downward slide as far as oil um, as of 2012. Mm -hmm. And what they mean by that, of course, is that it's going to be 10 to $15 a gallon mm -hmm. for gasoline. And I think we have to like, really face uh, you know, truthfully what that really means. And mm -hmm. so 
Um, you know, it's, it's a spiritual test, and we're all being given it on a collective level. And how we respond, in what way we respond, has got to be decided right now. You know, it seems like there's a there's a collective uh, uh, will that we that operates at the subconscious level that is functioning, and but also we need to become conscious and uh, shift from you know being in denial and and living with these uh, untruths and start to see what's going on. So, um, as you said, uh, it's like the phoenix rising from the ashes, but the ashes aren't going to be fun if you know, we're busy trying to accumulate more stuff and, you know, listening to American Idol at night and so on and so forth. <laughs> yeah, but, um, it, 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 it's amazing what w the um, concentration on the trivial <laughs> is such an important part or time in our history. Yeah. And um, it, it's almost as if it, it, it has to be this way somehow. And yeah. that people, like... It, you know, it's almost like a spiritual Darwinism, and mm -hmm. and, 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 you, and you become befuddled and confused by it. And you try to, I try to tell my very enlightened and intelligent friends uh, what's happening, and they look at me and they just kind of shrug their shoulders and say, well, whatever happens, happens. And I'm thinking, no, this isn't just you, this is your family, mm -hmm. this is your lives, this is your future. You can't just shrug your shoulders and say whatever. Exactly. And, you know, this is, it, it's, uh, at the same time, you know, there's a whole group of people who are waking up very quickly and accepting what's happening. And so it's just, you know, the, the race between disaster and education is apparent in every direction. And, again, I don't want to scare anyone, but, you know, this is it. We're at the, we're at the time period when... We're going to be going into a world of incredible chaos, and I would think that unless we're very careful, we're going to be, you know, in trouble. And so we need to take all the precautions we can. We need to get spiritually right with the world, mm -hmm. and we need to learn to live a little closer to the land. I think. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty fortunate that way, since I live on a, a piece of acreage that I can grow vegetables. And in fact, this year I plan on expanding the garden quite a bit and learning, like you said, how to do some of these things that my grandparents did. They came over um, to California in a, in a um, I was going to say a wheelbarrow, in a uh, covered wagon. Yeah. You know, and so just in my time alone, from a covered wagon to, you know, where we're headed now is, uh, you know, and who knows where that is. Well, yeah, and, and the thing is, is that. Um, the connection between what your grandparents know, knew and what you know has been broken, and so we have to rediscover a lot of things that they already knew. Uh, yeah. That's why I say it's in some ways a perfect storm. Yeah. But you know what? We do have a lot better communication than they did, and we should be able to compare notes and find the right ways to do things, and there's a lot of people working towards this. Yeah. So. But, you know, we also have the climate change that, you know, that's going on. And people say, well, you know, maybe it's not happening. Maybe it is happening. Well, you know, i, I got to be honest with you. Um, I'm looking out my window. Uh, I live in the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking out my window, and it's late April, and um, it's snowing. No. And it never snows here after the mid-February. Wow. And it's been snowing for two or three days now. That's amazing. Yeah, and it snowed more yesterday in Scotland than it has snowed in like 50 years. Wow. And so I'm wondering, you know, <laughs> what's, what's going on. And everyone in my area here is wondering what's going on because tomorrow's Earth Day. And we're going to be going to the festival, and it's going to be about 30 degrees. Wow. With a half a foot of snow on the ground, it looks like, which is just impossible because we're right on the sea. We're right, you know, That's on amazing. the ocean, and you never get this kind of weather right on wow. the ocean. So this is happening, and it's happening in a big way. And, yeah. Uh, um, I, mean, I don't know what to make of it, except that it's a time of being tested, and... Uh, and we have to get right with it. And uh, I think we're going to. We're having a, um, uh, for people in California who are interested, we're having a 2012 conference in San Francisco at Fort Mason on November 1st. 
um, in which we're having um, Dan Daniel Brinkley and Greg Braden and Alberto oh. Bialdo and Daniel Pinchback and a lot of people, and we're going to be really addressing these issues of tangibility and practicality as well as the deep spiritual issues. So people in California are interested in that should uh, check that out. We are also doing another one. We're doing a whole series of 2012 conferences between now and December 21st, 2012. And this is the uh, second we did one in L.A. a few months ago that was incredibly successful. And uh, we're doing another one in Vegas next year. And we're just going to keep them going because we're trying to make people aware of the changes that are afoot. Wonderful. Where can people find out more about that? Is that on your uh, Yeah, you can go to... Um, uh, go to Sacred Mysteries. Uh, right now, I guess you'll have to go to sacredmysteries.com, but soon it will be sacredmysterieslive.com, which is another uh, entity that we're creating to put on these things and get the word out and mm. and everything. And uh, it's going to be quite exciting, and, and the Fort Mason one's going to be uh, really a good uh, a good chance for people to to co-mingle and, and, and learn the things that we need to learn to get through this time period and to face it with, not with fear and trepidation, but with honesty and with bravery. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, just, just as an aside. You know, well, that sounds wonderful. To, you, I might see you there. Yeah, <laughs> come on. You're I invited. I live in Northern California, so that's not too bad a drive. Oh, I love Northern California. <laughs> where, where, what part of Northern California lives? I'm in Placerville. Oh, Colorado yeah, right County. up there. Yeah, I love that place. Yeah, so it's just a short drive down. And uh, I've had a couple of those people on my show. Daniel's a wonderful guest. He's, oh, he uh, is. What a, what a nice guy. He's <laughs> just amazing. <laughs> And you know, and that's what I find too that I, the people that come onto this show are doing this as a service to others, and it's from the heart. And you really are doing a, a major service to humanity by helping people get this information and opening minds and opening possibilities, and just you know, not scaring people, but trying to prepare them for things that you know have recurred and are on the horizon again. Yeah, and uh, it, 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 this is like the, this is the best time in the world in some ways to to have ever been be alive because yeah. there's more of us here right now and we know more than we ever have and we're comparing notes in ways that we never knew before in different cultures and spiritual traditions and it's it's breathtaking in a lot of ways yeah. and uh, and we must stop you know in the middle of turmoil and confusion and and reflect on the things that we have that we no one in the past at least not for thousands of years has has had and mm -hmm. and thank the universe and whatever supreme beings that you may believe in to be lucky enough to live in a in a world where uh the, this incredible information of alchemy and and Tantra and mm. and uh, uh, the indigenous traditions and and all these things are are all coming to the front and and we're talking about them in ways that we never could talk about them before. Mm -hmm. So we, it's a, it's a great time and uh, you know um, I just I just want people to take care of themselves too while they're enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know it's funny because. <clears throat> There, I was just reading a book by Richard Hoagland too, and I know you you mentioned him as well. And uh, uh, I, uh, what he's talking about falls into line with everything that we're talking about. And it, you know, you can begin to see the little bits of the puzzle pieces starting to come together, even though the uh, it's been kept from us. <laughs> yeah. You know, and there's a lot of information that's being hidden and concealed, and we're being manipulated in a lot of different ways. But. Yeah. But this information is coming out, and I, I uh, it is, and they don't seem to be able to stop it. It's the dangest thing I've ever seen. Um, you know, um, uh, one one of the stories that, uh, I, in some ways, it's the story of our age, and it's the story of of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Mm. And uh, in the Garden of Eden, there's two trees. There's the tree of life, and there's the tree of knowledge mm -hmm. and um you know god says to adam and eve you know you can eat of anything you want here but you know you can't eat of the tree of knowledge mm -hmm. and uh you know eve being a typical woman you know <laughs> she's gonna listen to that so you know she, she eats the apple 
And the apple is curious because of all the fruits and vegetables and plants on Earth, really nothing exemplifies the higher dimensional field or the higher dimensional oh. typology quite like an apple. Yeah. And it has the toroidal yeah. uh, surface, and the future of the apple lies in the core where the seeds are, yeah. which is the future. So the future has to come out from the center and then come expound into the concretized world to create more of the toroidal spheres at the end of the branches of the tree. And... Um, uh, another curious thing about an apple is if you cut an apple at uh, 20 degrees or 19.5 degrees, if you're Richard Hoagland, mm. uh, you'll see that the seeds are in a pentagram mm. uh, shape, like a human or da Vinci's uh, man. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, again, you can see this kind of pentagram uh, concretization of matter lying at the center of the hypersphere. Mm -hmm. And so this is the knowledge that we have been denied mm -hmm. and that we kept been told from the beginning of our mythology that we're not allowed to eat of. Mm -hmm. And um, it isn't that God's a bad guy or anything like that. It's that we weren't ready at that time mm -hmm. to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. This seminal event, this Singularity doesn't occur until the end of the age when we are mm. then allowed to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. Mm. And so the fruit of the tree of knowledge is the knowledge of for the 4D hyperspace, the mm. hyperspheres that are wrapped around, topologically around uh, our reality. And uh, this is what the, I can prove yet any shadow of a doubt, this is what the Mayans are mapping. Mm. Um, this is what the Cross of Hende is mapping. This is what the procession of the equinoxes is mapping. This is what the um, Inca are mapping. It's what the Egyptians and a lot of other people. And it was, not, it was knowledge that everyone knew mm -hmm. but was forgotten and and, and the answers to the um, questions of what is the fruit of the tree of knowledge that you can't they can't be given in, in out it's a cheat to do that you mm -hmm. have to understand it uncover it and reveal it on your own mm -hmm. it's it's a cheat it's something that isn't allowed within the realms of this the parameters of this reality mm -hmm. and so here at the end of time with the internet and radio shows and and books and you know um, mm -hmm. there's almost a race going on yeah get out this knowledge before it's too late yeah. and as soon as we get this knowledge out in a way in a big time way and this is the entire plot of the new film time wave 2013 mm -hmm. so it's now getting out into a film then you will, um, we will create a forward escape into which we get out of our current problems by uh, escaping into a time wave mm -hmm. that is infinite and can be, it, it is expanding and all directions all the time mm. and uh this is difficult to explain until it happens and then when it happens everyone will understand it so do you, you know, words are not enough yeah yeah uh when does it when does your film come out it's coming out right now it'll be playing we're playing in uh we have a showing in hollywood this tuesday on earth day Wonderful. and then we're going we're showing it at the it'll be showed at the um Oh, uh, I can't remember the name of the bookstore in San Rafael um, and uh, in San Francisco, and uh, it'll be all over the United States. It's showing right now. For those interested, either go to timewave2013.com or go to sacredmysteries.com and click screenings. And if, if it's not up you know, now, it'll be up within the next week, the entire list of all the screenings. 
and everything. And Wonderful. it's a very, very exciting film. And I think it's in its little way will do its part to help change the uh, modality. Wonderful. Yeah. And um, so it has Gene Houston and Alberto Violdo and um, Whitley Strieber mm. and Daniel Pinchbeck mm. and William Henry and Jose Arguez. <laughs> I can't remember. Dennis McKenna. Wow. You know, just a lot of great people are in it. And uh, uh, it really goes into the entire high, higher dimensional aspects of what's happening, the secret of alchemy and the promise of the prophecies of these indigenous traditions. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of Terence McKenna's. I, I, unfortunately, I didn't get to meet him when he was alive. Uh, I was too busy doing those things that he was <laughs> talking about. <laughs> and uh, I'm one of those people in the 60s that experimented with LSD and other things. And it definitely opens doors. There's no question about it. Oh, yeah. And, uh, uh, Terrence was a good friend of mine. In fact, uh, did, now that you mention that, I might as well uh, announce my first announcement. We are uh, Sacred Mysteries. My company is about to release Terrence's last movie, his last oh, wow. film. He shot it with Sheldon Rockland, of Stick Fire fame. Wow. Um, in 1998, both died within two years after huh. shooting the film. It laid untouched in uh, Sheldon Rockland's stepson, Morgan Harris. Is has finished it. Spent you know her Herculean effort to finish this film, uh, and it's called the Alchemical Dream: Rebirth of the Great Work with Terence McKenna. And he goes to Prague. It's shot in Prague, and it's about the uh, attempt to create an alchemical kingdom uh, in the late 1500s with King Frederick of Bohemia uh, and Elizabeth. And um, it is an amazing, incredible film. And Terrence takes us into an ancient alchemy lab. And oh um, it's just an amazing movie. And it'll be out also following Time Wave 2013. Will that be available to uh, purchase? It will be oh, good. coming this fall, but we're going to be showing it across the United States over oh, the next wow. few months. Wonderful. So get ready for that one, too. So oh, two films great. on alchemy coming out, you know, right in a row. It's, it can't be a coincidence. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. That's going to be a, both of those sound like a must-see. They are, Absolutely. and I, I just, I, you know, I'm, I'm partial with Time Late 2013 because I produced it, yeah. and I really didn't have anything to do with the alchemical dream outside of being a fan of it and trying to get it finished and yeah. helping in every way I can. But I have to tell you, I am so excited about the alchemical dream with Terrence McKenna. Oh, my god. I can't gosh. even begin. Uh, I've seen it like 25 times now trying to finish it, and uh, um, it is just so good. And it's Terrence at his peak. Oh. Yeah, and he is and just sheer genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. And, and he's riveting. He's, I mean, he's just, you, as you, once, you, uh, once you connect with him, you just can't stop listening. You know, no, it's 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 the logos. The He's the master of the logos. The, oh yeah. The alchemical mind is fashioned through language, and when your alchemical mind is opened, yeah. language is what is emitted, and language is a hyperdimensional modality. I I speak grunts and groans or in a phone, and people listen through their radio to my grunts and groans, and actually can understand ideas and concepts and thoughts and yeah. and it's like wow if we just stop for a moment and just think about that you know it is it is a telepathy you know generated by uh audio codes and terrence was a master, master. of that and yes. uh and, and 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 i think all of us um have the ability to become masters of that also and those who can speak the clearest those who can best articulate the arguments in the collective discussions about our future uh, are going to be the ones who win. Yes. And yes. that's why we have to keep saying what we say and doing what we do. Yeah. And, you know, if, if fundamentalists or Republicans or, or anyone tries to stop us, we don't try to fight them. We just keep talking. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs>
and whoever's behind trying to suppress information or this or that or the other thing, all of that's going to fall apart because at those levels, they can't trust each other. Well, they not only can't trust each other, but at this point, the, esoteric, the information is getting so esoteric that they don't even understand what it is we're talking about anymore. Yeah, yeah. They're just shaking their heads and going, what? <laughs> what are they talking about? And, and you know, I like to amuse there is, oh, they're going to, you know, censor the Internet. And I say, well, they're not, they're not going to censor the Internet because it would affect corporate business. Exactly. <laughs> but even if they did, and they aren't, but even right. if they did if censor they did. the Internet tomorrow and yeah. say they're going to start watching for keywords and you'll be arrested if you use blah, blah words right. or whatever, <laughs> these, these kids... You can't even read their emails. They're talking in code already. Yeah. Everything will just shift to a code, and we'll all know what the code means, and yeah. we won't be able to prove what what you know what you're saying is really what you're saying, and it's it's almost going to end up being almost like an absurd Marx Brothers movie played in fast motion, where yeah. you know they're going to try to prove that we're subversive. And, and they're not even going to be able to understand what it is we're talking about. And that's really the point that we're at right now. Yeah. And they've yeah. got to be sweating. I mean, they've got to be sweating big time. Oh, yeah. With uh, Hoagland's book coming out and a lot of the other stuff that's coming out. You know, the pressure is enormous. And, uh, you know, I, I, if I was them, I'd be really worried about you know, possible insurrections and things. Because well, I think they are, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why there are so many uh, bases that have been refurbished to store people. Yeah. You know, I mean, not only are, uh, are, are the powers that be aware of these coming events, uh, but and in addition to the ones that they manufacture themselves, uh, but they are preparing for, you know, having to hurt people off and to... Uh, you know, camp, internment camps are all over the country. Yeah, I know, and it, it's a very worrisome. And uh, you know, uh, American people are turned into such sheep that, you know, they're not going to, oh, they're just going to say, oh, they probably deserved it or something. And uh, they're not going to realize. But at the same time, um, i got to be honest with you, there are so many people that um, are not, feeling real good about things that yeah. they would have to haul away about 95% of the population at this point. Yeah, yeah, I because, think you're absolutely right. Yeah, there's a lot of angry people out there. That's one of the things I'm trying to do is get the anger levels down yeah. so that yeah. we don't fall into some kind of premeditated trap. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly, yeah. because there, there are even microwave devices that can stimulate that. I know, and, um, there, and we don't want a lot that. of things to us, but you know what? None of it's going to work. Oh, it's yeah. not going to work, no. No. We know that. It, no. it can't work. It's doomed to failure, so, you know, take your best shot. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're doing it. They're, they're, they're giving us their best shot. Well, now, and, t talking about the uh, secret language, um, you know, the indigos and crystals and all the special kids, and, you know, there are others that are incarnating onto the planet now, too. Uh, the telepathy is really go <laughs> that's how they communicate globally and uh, i think that's something i mean if if there was a clamp down on the internet what's to stop us from hooking up uh you know rehooking up the matrix between each other well we we are i yeah. think i think that that's um that's exactly what's going on yeah yeah and um i think that um you know uh like the internet you know how when you're um you're in a relationship with a friend or a lover, mm -hmm. you begin unknowing what they're thinking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, th that's because familiarity breeds uh, telepathy. Yes. And uh, what's going on on the Internet uh, is that we are, we're, we are becoming really familiar with each other now. Yeah. And yeah. we're knowing who we all are and that the people, say, in New Guinea or in South Florida or... Uh, in northern Sweden, aren't really any different than we are. No. And no. then what this is going to uh, engender is a mass contagion almost of telepathy. Yes. This is what they're really afraid of. Yes. When this happens, it will be over, and it is going to happen. It's yes. already happening. I'm old enough to know that, you know, 20 years ago, let me think, I want to make sure I'm right yet, 20 years ago, yeah. when Ronald Reagan was president, 
he could actually say things that were outright outrageous lies uh -huh. and go on and on with these outrageous lies. And 90% of the people just shook their heads and, oh, isn't he wonderful? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, you know, you, you, you walk around and go, what in the world is going on? These people actually believe this guy. And then, now today, the same thing is going on, the same lies, the same yeah. kind of, and nobody believes it. Everybody knows that they're lying, and this is the result of this mass collective telepathic wave that comes at the end of time yeah. when we know the truth. And I, it, I was at a restaurant, and somebody started supporting the war in Bush about a year ago, and almost everybody in the restaurant burst out laughing at this uh. poor guy. I felt sorry for him because... Wow. You know, he was the only guy in the room that still bought the old line, hook, line, and sinker, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and he was getting laughed at. We know that Bush threw the baseball out at the baseball game in Washington, and the crowd booed him. I mean, yeah, yeah. he had to scamper off the field. They were booing him. And this is really important. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, of course, we don't get that information without having to look around for it a little bit. Yeah, well, no one buys it, and uh, even the most hard-cold uh, Republicans and conservatives, and, and I'm conservative, um, so I'm not saying anything against conservatives, because I have a, a very conservative bent. I don't think that we should be playing fast and loose with things. I think we need to think about things that have happened in the past and, and, and design the future based on the things that we've learned. And that's a very conservative point of view. Oh, absolutely. But at the same time, you know, we've also got to be imaginative and willing to bounce back on our heels and, and come up with new ideas and things. And, and so it's not just a conservative liberal thing. That's just some kind of old school line of BS that we can't really fall for anymore. Sometimes you're going to be a conservative, and sometimes you're going to be a liberal. It depends on the situation. And sometimes rebellious. Yeah, and our founding fathers were rebellious. Yeah, and 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 this is this is what we're going to have to face. And I don't think we should let you know the left and right dictate so much anymore to us about how we're going to feel. And and we got to get away from this cultural identity with political parties and yeah, duality yeah there's nothing there they're all the same exactly they're just exactly. feeding you a different line of bs depending if they're democrats or republicans but you know in the end we know that no matter who's elected the war is going to go on they're going to invade iran yeah we know that this is going to happen it doesn't matter if it's barack obama or john mccain or hillary yep or even ralph nader would probably be forced into it yep so we have to accept that, and we have to say that that doesn't work anymore, and we must almost encourage the breakdown of the larger system mm -hmm. to regress back into smaller, localized systems where we can control the quality of our food and water and spiritual quality and uh, not let poisonous things intrude on us. And I think that's really where we're going. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, speaking of food and water, you know, the genetically modified food is, is pretty scary, too. It certainly is. It's, it seems to be getting a foothold, but, uh, you know, I guess we have that seed bank to fall back on. Well, we're, 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 in, we're in serious trouble with the GMO, and, and uh, I don't know why we're letting this happen. I can't, for the life of me, understand, uh, you know, why we would be letting these genetically modified seeds get into the food chain and I don't know um, it's one of those things that I was describing before it's a perfect storm yeah you know, and, and and even if you want to grow organic food like we do where I live uh, we're being invaded by these uh, genetically modified seeds oh absolutely. and Monsanto can actually sue an organic farmer yep. who accidentally has Monsanto corn growing on his land and they've been known to accidentally spill seeds from their trucks <laughs> and then go back and, and dis add, discover them, trying to help the farmer improve his uh, business. And the poor farmers are just beaten down into nothing. They have nothing left with all the lawsuits. Well, it's true, and, and, and it's... 
And then have you, are you aware of the chemtrails that are being sprayed overhead? I'm very, very aware of them. I actually, I think I know what they are. Finally, it took me a long time to figure them well, out. But. What do you think they are? Um, I, um, I think that what they are is they are some kind of layer of, of um, particles, heavy metals, aluminum sulfates and things, that they're laying in the air uh -huh. to create a electromagnetic, uh, to lessen the electromagnetic resistance within the area that they're being sprayed uh -huh. to allow hyperdimensional experiments to take place. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. I found a, a German uh, politician said that they were laying them down to do experiments, the Americans were. And uh, I started thinking about it, and I was in Big Sur a month ago, and every day they started up at about 6 in the morning, and they went basically all day until late afternoon was completely clouded over with chemtrails. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very irritating and uh, um, you know, ruined my trip at Big Sur, to be honest with you. Well, you know, you can't, uh, they're overhead every day. And, and, you know, when I tell my neighbors or people that aren't familiar with them, even when I present information that just is, even if they look up, uh, I'm, they'll laugh in my face and say, you're crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? It's uh, I've actually cleared whole parties out talking about it. <laughs> or, you know, they went outside in the rain to yeah. not listen to me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I know exactly what you need. I, had, I heard an interesting theory. This is, this is a, kind of came through a back channel that I tapped into that uh, originally it had to do with uh, affecting the weather. That, you yeah. know, we know that they can affect the weather through HARP and various other things in the ionosphere, but that originally it had to do with redistributing the uh, water, that the, the problem was yeah. the world burning out of water. And what happened was it went awry. And so now they have computers which uh, have to continue generating these things because they screwed up, and they're actually charging nations privately uh, to manipulate the weather in such a way, that, to manipulate this thing so that the, they'll get their share of water. So, um, you know, I've heard that before, and it, it may be true. Um, who knows? I hear my own, um, uh, um, I, I just, I, I, I don't, I, I, I've seen it, and, I, and I've seen that explanation, and it may very well be true, but I, at the same time, I've noticed that when they spray is generally when there's an ensuing high pressure system coming yeah, in. Yeah. And um, I know that high pressure is going to cause super high static charges in uh -huh. the atmosphere. And so I don't know, maybe it's one like of those, it. but I, 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 whatever it is, it's military and it has nothing to do with um, helping us. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> and it's just it's such a pleasure to, to finally be able to bring this out into the airwaves because, you know, it's been going on for, oh, who knows, maybe seven, eight, nine, ten years. Um, actually, it started in, uh, my, I saw my first chemtrails in 1994. Wow. And um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an amateur meteorologist oh. and uh, I spent an astronomer. And I spent a lot of time looking up, and uh, uh, I saw the first one in 94, could not figure out what it was, thought that maybe I was even hallucinating. Yeah, um, yeah. Or having a flashback because I was seeing straight clouds in the sky. Uh -huh. And I uh, tried to tell people, and uh, probably there were people who actually considered, you know, having me committed to a loony bin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I kind of quit talking to people, and uh, now I use it as my litmus test for... Uh, credibility and uh, the ability to see a, the larger world around us. Yes. If someone knows about chemtrails and sees them, then I know that I'm dealing with somebody who knows what's happening. And if they don't see them, I don't even bother talking to them. Right. right. I, I think it's a wonderful device to actually you know, dig through, yeah, find yeah. out who's who and what they're made of. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I look at it as a great thing. I don't waste my time anymore. I'm talking to people who um, who uh, can't hear. Right. You exactly. know, Jackie Mason 
and the comic said that he's uh, tired of talking to people who don't listen. He feels like he's just talking to himself, so yeah. he's just going to cut the middleman out now and just spend all of his time blabbering to himself. <laughs> well, that's sort of how I feel sometimes. I know, um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, they're, these chemtrails are real, and, uh, you know, they're doing incredible things to us. So. Well, there could even, you know, Linda Moulton Howe did uh, uh, some things on it, and she's kind of stopped, but there was the possible link between that and the Morgellons disease, too. That's another yes. thing. And nanotechnology, you know, that kind of filters in there, and... Uh, there's uh, bacteria, there's dried blood in the in them. Whatever yeah. it is, it can't be beneficial. No, no, it's 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 part of a long term plan. It's like this, okay? Let's say that you know, um, you, you know that uh, let's not let's not even go to a celestial event like okay. comets or center of the galaxies blowing up or solar flares. Let's just stick with something tangible like running out of oil. Right. You know you're going to run out of oil, and that when oil hits uh, at some certain price, I would say somewhere around $10 a gallon uh -huh. for gas, that the entire economy is going to completely implode. Yeah. And a, a gallon of bread will be 15 bucks. I mean, a gallon of uh, milk will be 15 bucks, and a loaf of bread will be 15 bucks. And 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 and, and people in the ghettos aren't going to be able to drive to their work, and it's going to cost uh, 12 bucks to take the bus one way. Uh -huh. When this happens, okay, um, it's not hard to do a few calculations and look at the ramifications of this and see that pretty soon you're going to have civil war. Right. And so you, you know, you're looking downstream and say, okay, this is going to happen in 10 years, and you're an elitist, and you tell your elite fellows this. So they begin planning, and they begin putting dampening agents psychological dampening agents into the water supplies and into yes. the air and yes. into foods and and uh, they begin allowing education to deteriorate yep. so that nobody knows what's going on yep. and they encourage behavior that destroys people yep. spiritually and they get us involved in war so that we're all preoccupied with just trying to stop wars. Yep. I mean, these may just all be little side things to keep us distracted from the larger picture, which is that we are in a world of hurt, yep. and it's going to get worse. You know, they do a calculation in biology, and the calculation is that if you spend more, an animal or a human, mm -hmm. spends more than a half a calorie gathering of energy, gathering up one calorie of food mm -hmm. that if it spends more than a half a calorie gathering up one calorie of food then that animal is doomed to distinct extinction or death wow. mm. okay wow. we are using five calories of energy yeah. for every calorie of food yep. we are so far beyond the edge of extinction rightfully by this calculation that there's all, and, and, and believe me, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, they know this. I'm not yeah. telling you anything that they don't already know. Yeah. So yeah. it's not, this is, this is what we're facing at this time. Well, and, you know, what's really irritating, you know, to say the least, and I, I guess everything does work out in its own divine timing, uh, is that these same people have uh, developed the ability to create energy possibly freely. Uh, all of the energy devices have been purchased and shelved by the major corporations. And, you know, the technology has probably existed for 20, 30 years to uh, get off of oil. Oh, they could, uh, they could power, everyone could have, uh, they, they could power a thousand Manhattans just from the energy that's in the ionosphere. Yeah. They yeah. know it, yeah. There's, uh, it has nothing to do with um, anything more than to hold the cards yep. until the most of the players have vanished from the game. Yep. That's yep. the game that's being played right now. Yep. And you know those that uh, are lucky enough to pass through the wormhole at the end of time are going to see that suddenly all these inventions will come to the forefront yeah. and, and everything. But right now, it, it's, it's, it's keep them addicted to oil. 
um, and then pull the rug out from under them. Yep. And uh, so places like China uh, will be the canary in the coal mine. Yep. India, when they begin going, when the famine begins hitting them, and I think that's probably very soon now. Very soon. Then we'll know that it's heading uh, heading our way. Uh, it's a great book by, um, I'm going to forget his name, it's called Europe's Inner Demons, and it's about um, the black plague in Europe, and uh, what we're about to have happen is going to be very similar to that. And, oh, yeah, absolutely, and, uh, and we've know, been some, prepped for, you know, some kind of uh, flu or whatever. Yeah, there's Devastating. several things on the horizon which are coming at us, and um, so, we're going to be in very, very big trouble. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it's time to uh, take care of our families and to buy some food and to get some land and learn how to grow our own food and create communities. And, you know, we're going to have to go back to acoustic music and uh, we're going to have to sing along with each other on the fire and tell stories. Exactly. And it's and really going to be really quite a wonderful world. And our children are suddenly going to become healthier both physically and mentally they won't be as fat they won't be as psychotic yeah um the whole thing is going to change once we get through this transition and that's why i guess i'm an optimistic person you know yeah yeah me too me too and i i believe that uh, the higher power wins the game at the end of the day i do believe that and uh, you know if i didn't have that belief i wouldn't be able to go on I, me neither me and neither. uh you know so i do believe that in the end uh, we have a gigantic spiritual force of unbelievable yeah. dimensions on our side, and a and lot of exciting, uh, a lot of excitement in the transformation itself. Yeah, it, yeah. The, the spiritual force is excited for us. Yes, yeah. and uh, we really are the paragon of creation. And you know, that's the last thing I want to leave everyone with. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the alchemists believe that human beings were the the paragon of all of creation. And in fact, we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been sold a bill of goods about how awful we are mm -hmm. and how degrading we are. And we are degrading sometimes, and we do bad things. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is that inside each and every one of us is a incredible higher dimensional force which is about to emerge. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be wonderful and terrible and scary and enervating. And uh, it's going to be everything all at once. Yes. And we can do it all together. And we are going to do it all yeah, together. we are going to do it together. And that's going to be why it's going to be so exciting. Yep. Jay, you have been absolutely fantastic. Um, would you make sure that people know how to reach your website? Yeah, you can go to my own personal website, which is jwidener.com. That's J-A-Y-W-E-I-D as in David, N as in Nancy, E-R.com. have free articles on there, Stanley Kubrick and Tolkien and... Uh, the, my favorite subject, which is the alchemy of time and uh, alchemy and a lot of other things, Cross of Hende. Or you can go to the company that I have with our films, which is sacredmysteries.com, which has all of our films and, uh, you know, on astrology and alchemy and uh -huh. healing the luminous body and wow. everything. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, sacred mystery school. Uh, through DVD because uh, we need to get the word out. So Wonderful. This is what it's about, and come to the 2012 thing, and you are personally invited. Just give me a call, and uh, we'll get you a ticket, and uh, uh, have everybody else that you know can come. That'd be great, too. Wonderful. Well, yeah, I didn't even get to, to ask you about Sharon Rose, who is quite an amazing person in her own right. So maybe I'm going to have to get her on my show, too. Well, I think you should have her on. She's a great guest. And I'd love to have you back again. No problem. All right. Thanks so much, Jay. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. And thank you, easy. listeners, and good night and uh, many blessings.